So let's say you've come back to GTA Online after a long hiatus only to find that the latest cars to be released are almost as expensive as a trip to the moon and back. Then you look at some of the older cars in GTA Online and say, couldn't I just use these cars? They're cheaper. Will they offer the same bang for their buck? Well in this video we're going to try and answer that very question. So for this video in particular we're going to compare vehicles of the same class, one from the ye olde days of GTA Online, against one released as part of the suck your money out of wallet DLC. So let's get started by looking at supercars. Back in the day a good racing car at the time would have been the Zentorno. It wasn't the fastest car in the class at the time but with a great combination of a good top speed and acceleration as well as great handling, one of the best in game at the time, the Zentorno was one hell of a car. The opponent I shall be pitting it up against will be the Overflood Autark, a supercar added as part of the Doomsday Heist DLC. At the price of just $2 million, it is more than double the price of the Zentorno before mods, and I know what you guys will be thinking. Well, these aren't the best supercars in the game, you need to test X against Y instead of this. But the thing is, we're just seeing if double the cost means double the car, and I urge you, if you are going shopping for the best vehicle for a particular class for racing, then I urge you to do your research, and also watch my videos on the car reviews. But anyways, let's see how these two cars compare on the drag performance test, shall we? Well, call me crazy and slap me sideways, a car that's only three quarters managed to keep on top of a car that's worth two million. This just goes to show that money doesn't always equate to performance. For the less observant of you watching, the Zentona was able to keep up with the Autark because of its slightly better start off the line. The acceleration allowed the car to gain a short lead before the slightly faster top speed of the Autark managed to pull him neck and neck. In any case, this was just supercars, let's now move on to a couple of sports cars, and we'll see just how much of a difference there is between a sports car of yesteryear and one released just a few weeks ago as of this video's upload. Introducing the Jester Race Car. For the price of just $350,000, it was introduced as part of the festive surprise update all the way back in 2015, and was a very racy looking car back before we could get anything like this in recent DLCs. I personally used this thing quite a lot for GTA racing back in the day, and have quite a lot of sports class race wins under my belt from using this very car. Its opponent weighing in at a whopping 1.6 million, it's the revolting Revolta! Added as part of the Doomsday Heist DLC, this car features a very... modest looking style. It's a pretty boring car to look at, okay? It looks like one of those armoured cars, only you can have the smoke weed everyday livery painted on it, and it also has machine guns on it. Basically Snoop Dogg's idea for a perfect car. Anyways, let's see how much of a difference these two cars of the same class have, if any, and if the extra 1.25 million is worth it for SMOKE WEED EVERY DAY! Congratulations, if you're one who bought smoke weed every day, then against a car costing 1.25 million less, you will have saved half a second on a drag runtime, which 
isn't that good. I suppose in a race, if you're racing for real and you needed a faster car for the straights, the smoke weed would be a better choice, but for those who just want to have a dos around in free drive all the time in free lobby sessions, then is the extra cross worth it? Anyways, moving on, let's take a look at some sports classics cars, and in this instance we actually have an example of older isn't always cheaper. Introducing the Z-Type, a sports classics car that was completely broken back in the day. Using Z-Types in sports classics races back in the day almost always guaranteed you a win if everyone else was using any other car. That is, unless you have the driving skill of an 8 year old using the gyroscope of a mobile phone to drive. Its opponent in this drag test will be the GT500. Now I personally don't have any experience with this car, so it's just going to be a case of, eh, we use this one. Anyways, let's see how they stack up, shall we? Well then, I gotta say, I was pretty worried when I saw the Z-Type fall behind on the first half of the strip, but when it got up to speed, its top speed allowed it to not only overtake the GT500, but also allowed it to reach the finish line and read the first chapter of The Hungry Caterpillar which would be the entire book. In any case, yes, I guess the price really did make a difference there, at least for a long straight of the length of the runway. Though if you were to pit these cars up against each other on a complex circuit with a lot of tight corners, then the GT500 would very easily beat the Z-Type. Moving on, let's take a look at some bikes. Now, in the past, bikes in GT Online were cheap as chips, and what you got for your money was something that allowed you to go pretty darn fast. But the bike we're going to be using for this video will be the Batty 801RR, a bike which was used extensively by competitive racing bikers, but now through the times and all the DLCs that came out recently, mainly the bikers update, we saw a lot of bikes that were just absolutely ludicrous in price. The major one that struck me when it first came out was the Hakoto Drag Bike costing just shy of $1 million, which was a lot for a bike in GTA when everything else at most cost upwards of 200000 For a drag run, or drag runs, I've done a run leaning forward as well as a run leaning backwards on both bikes just to satisfy those who expect nothing less. Let's see how they stack up, shall we? Well, it just goes to show how much of a difference there is in top speed when a player leans backwards on their bike. The Batty didn't do so well on the leaning forward run with the drag crossing the line one and a half seconds before the Batty, but when it came to the leaning back run, both bikes were pretty much neck and neck all the way. The price difference between the two bikes makes the performance difference rather questionable unless you're looking for a dedicated racing bike, and even then, still, I don't think I'd choose the Hokocho Drag as my main racing bike mainly due to its poor turning performance compared to most other bikes in the game. Yeah, hey, you can complain about my choice of bike all you want, buddy, but I personally think that the drag has horrible handling for a bike. As for my personal bike of choice for all uses, I go for the Manchus! Overall, are the newer DLC vehicles worth the more ludicrous prices over the older counterparts? 
Well, if you're a hardcore racer, then the answer is pretty obvious. But for those who are just looking for a runaround to get you from A to B in free mode, while also satisfying your taste in cars, then there's certainly a wide range of choice of cars that you can go shopping for. That's mainly the reason why there's so many cars, bikes and all other manner of vehicles in GT Online. It's all about the research, seeing what you want out of a vehicle, and if you want to use it for anything serious or not. But in any case, I hope you enjoyed this short video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for loads more GTA content coming to you very soon. See you around, everyone.